Uh, welcome to Gaining Momentum with Steam, uh, Keys to Successful Implementation. My name is Ted Olander and I'm the Magnet Coordinator at uh, McKinley Steam Academy. Um, you're probably all saying right now, like, cool, he plays the bass too. Let, let's <laughs> clear this up right now. Do not let this image lead you to believe that I have any musical talent whatsoever. What you don't see is the cropped out portion where there's like 12 middle schoolers on the floor laughing, watching me try to figure out how to play that um, at our instrument petting zoo. So <laughs> I do not play the bass. Let's just clear that up right now so you don't have to ask. <laughs> and I'm Jen Phelan. Um, I'm a band teacher, but a lot of other things at McKinley. And um, yeah, I'm a, a seventh grade advisor also. And so our, my role in the building, um, I've only been there five years, but I'm the longest residing person of our team, as you'll hear. Yep, um, I'm Molly Safranco. I am the visual arts teacher, uh, six through eight. More about me later, I guess. Awesome, well, welcome all. Um, we're really looking forward to being able to collaborate with you as well um, as we kind of share our story. Because like you said, that's, we just want to share these ideas and figure out how they can fit into what we're doing in our own, own worlds. Um, McKinley Steam Academy, we are a six through eight middle school with a steam theme that emphasizes medical sciences and the arts. So we became a, a steam academy in 2019. Um, well, and then we kind of know how things went. A lot of flat tires <laughs> along the way on that journey. Some engine lights came on that we had no idea even what they were. Um, but we're educators, we figure it out, right? And we keep moving. So today, to, to kind of provide some structure to our story, we're going to uh, utilize the five stages of team development and, and kind of fit our story within that. We are a very laid back group though, so if questions come up along the way or connections come up along the way, please don't hesitate to chime in and, and let us know your thoughts or your questions or anything like that. And we are very fortunate to have the exact amount of people oh, yeah. um, here so Jen can call you up and we can demonstrate this <laughs> exercise that we did when we were forming our team. So, no, I'm just kidding. But, but I'm going to pass it over to Jen. Um, myself, I, I joined the McKinley Steam Academy team just two years ago um, after COVID. So there was a lot of work done prior to me arriving at McKinley. So Jen was there. Um, so I'm going to kind of pass it over to her. She can provide more context to, to the early stages of becoming a Steam Academy. So I have quite a few years of experience in education. And I started in music. And I taught various instrumental music and then choral music. And then I got into ed leadership. And then I spent a year as an administrator and went, yikes, this is not what I want to do with my life. And so I was placed, because my undergrad degree had been in instrumental education, and so I was placed at McKinley Steam Academy after serving as a principal for a year. And I went, oh, this is going to be fun. I love this. So I'm in this room uh, with a staff that had a fairly high turnover, so a lot of us were new faces in the room. And literally, we were wrestling with this question of, so what does this mean? We're a STEAM Academy, and we were one of the STEAM Academies in Cedar Rapids, and it was going to become a STEAM Academy. So we had to, we wrestled with this idea of an identity and what we were going to become. So just like looking at those highlighted words, I, I felt this, you know, everybody's sitting in a circle in the room, introducing themselves to each other and trying to figure out who we are all and who, how we, what we bring to the table there. So that was, that was 2018, and we were still officially McKinley Middle School at the time. So if we move on, these conversations led us to the following realizations. We are located right across the street from Mercy Medical Center in Cedar Rapids, literally across the street in the med quarter. Um, we're downtown school. The other five middle schools in Cedar Rapids were our different locations and would, you know, so we are right down there. Grant Wood was the first art teacher in the building, and the building still houses many of his works, and there's a lot of history there. And a lot of our alumni are now community leaders in Cedar Rapids. So we are unique in that of the middle schools in Cedar Rapids, we have a very, very high population of low SES students, and we have a very high population of high SES. And so those kind of those spikes, without much middle, give us a unique community of a lot of low-income students, but we also have some incredibly supportive parents that are willing to fund things and be supportive. So it's a, a very unique community. And we are fed into by Johnson Steam Academy, which is one of the first uh, Steam, I think that was the first, first magnet, first magnet yeah. in Cedar Rapids. Mm -hmm. So 
it was kind of like, you are going to become a magnet school and we're gonna call you a STEAM Academy, so now, now what? <laughs> you know? And so we, we, we came up with those ideas and then this was the byproduct of those conversations. We had to write a mission statement and a vision. And so this is actually what we do at each one of our professional learnings on every Friday afternoon. We have a staff member remind us of our mission. McKinley STEAM Academy is a unified community that engages all students to be socially, emotionally, and academically prepared for the future. <coughs> and, and as a magnet middle school, McKinley STEAM Academy is dedicated to learning collaboratively, cultivating curiosity, celebrating diversity, and building relationships through high quality integrated curriculum opportunities. So this tag, oh, sorry. We, go, yeah. yep. we go back to the, the knowledge is created, dreams take hold, students lead the way. When we came up with the, the, those words, that was like, oh, okay, so what does this mean? And, and these were just words on a page, and we started saying these words, but I, having that this is, I will be starting my sixth year at McKinley, but there are times that, you know, I've actually kind of just said, oh, students are leading the way again, look at that, you know? Or, wow, we created the knowledge there. And so the words have actually taken on a life form as we've gone through this journey. So then the next stage, we get into storming of our team development. So I'll let you read the whole definition for yourself, but those ideas that emerge oh, me? <laughs> no, led to, led to the, the question at the bottom and note the school year. This was school year 2019-2020. We all know what 2020 looked like from March on. And this was the first year of McKinley STEAM Academy. We had announced in the year prior in April we were becoming and it's all this. And then everybody's like, now, how do we do this? Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. So one of the first things we did is we had STEAM classes. And those classes were populated by kids who had holes in their schedule, quite literally. And they plunked them into a STEAM class and the kids are going, what's this STEAM class and why am I here? You know, and it's really hard to say to a kid, well, you know, you're here because you're gonna get a cool experience. And we had teachers doing really cool experiences. They were painting things, they were creating things. We also did STEAM days. So that day, you know, when we did those STEAM activities. So all of these had these pitfalls with them. But there were individual pockets of like, early adopters, and we, um, we also, in 2020, in the fall, if we keep going there, <laughs> our uh, music team was faced with the question of, can you guys teach music online? Because it was not only COVID, but Cedar Rapids had been hit by a derecho that destroyed a lot of our building, and we were not even in the building until December. So, you know, we had, I worked with this amazing team, and the three of us went, yeah, we can teach music online, and then went, how do we do that? And nobody, you know, nobody knew what to do. So one of the things we, we realized is that in our band, choir, and orchestra classes, we all wanted some of the same outcomes from our students. We wanted them to be able to listen to a piece of music, think critically about it, recognize some of the characteristics of that piece of music, and be able to express themselves and write about it. So we developed some online tools where kids would watch a video or we'd watch it you know, in our little Google Meet and then they would write about what they noticed in that music and they would extract the facts about it and then also put in their opinion and why they felt that way and what, that, what connected with them. That has evolved now into, at McKinley, we do weekly listening experiences and it's just every Friday our classes start with a very short, um, we all watch the same thing in our various classes. Kids open a Google form, they write, they describe the characteristics of the piece of music and then they rate that piece of music and they tell why they felt that way and then periodically they will look back through their responses and go, hmm, I tend to like pieces that are like this and they reflect on this. So we, but that was in 2020, the fall of 2020. When we went back into in-person in the fall of 2021, we went right back to all of our old habits and we were teaching the way we used to before and we weren't using these tools and so it took into Last fall, we kind of went, hey, we were doing some really good stuff, but now that we're back in person, we're not doing some of those good things. So now, how do we bring the things that we created back in? So in the resources, um, at the end of our slide presentation, there's some links to some of the tools that we've developed and how we've used them, so feel free to access those. But just as an example, you know, we, we had this idea, and then it went away, and then we brought it back in, so. We were interested in, you know, we all went through that phase of whatever job we were doing of how, 
COVID changed our world. You know, did anybody else experience a kind of falling forward story <laughs> um, where you have to deal with something and then you go, oh, the byproduct is actually a good thing, even though we thought it was not going to be so good? Yeah, Molly and I had the opportunity in the last breakout to really think about, <coughs> you know, when, when we get put into those situations where we're forced to be challenged and stretched, right? Um, we would never try those things if we weren't put in those situations, so we know we want to create those conditions for kids at times too, right? Um, obviously, the, the pandemic and the derecho on top of that for Cedar Rapids schools was a very, very challenging situation in which all school staff were stretched in ways that they never thought imaginable. Um, and, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, there, there were really cool things that came out of that, but a lot of those got lost when we came back to normal, whatever that is, right? Um, but, but luckily, as we've had time to reflect, like, like Jen was saying, with our music department, why did we get rid of that? It was working. It, it can work here too, right? So like, and th that goes back to Susan this morning, talk about that integrated experience versus the, you know, enhancement experience. Like, it, it wasn't working as well when you, when you took it out. Find, I would, I would say another piece of advice I would give is to find the strengths in your team and then just capitalize create, you know, ca capitalize, capitalize those things like crazy. Yep. So when we come back in person, it uh, was kind of in person, so we were all stuck. I mean, I think music had some pullouts and your role was a little bit different, but the exploratory, um, the teachers, exploratory teachers were art, computer science, engineering, tech, and wellness. Um, and so we come back and we're all forced to be in a room uh, just like this, like you're my class, I'm the art teacher, I teach you and a whole bunch of other kids like via video chat um, once a day. And then the math teacher and the social studies teacher and the, they all zoom into the class and they, um, you know, and the, my, my students get taught. And there's a couple of great things, like overall it was an experience that I don't want to repeat, <laughs> but there was a couple of amazing things that came out of that. And one of them was that I know now what every single teacher, like their, I pretty much know their curriculum. Like, so I, I was really easy to find um, connections. And um, so architecture, right? So engineering, the engineering tech guy decided to, from that, from knowing the sixth grade um, literature, one of their units the, on um, wind energy, on the kite runner, was it? The boy the who harnessed the wind. The boy who harnessed the ren, wind. And so he decided to um, do an engineering project with uh, so like wind power. And so they created a wind power engineering tech class. Um, so I know everybody's curriculum, and everyone knows that I'm serious about curriculum too, which was a revelation, I think, for a lot of, <laughs> a lot of teachers. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out how do we come back from all this craziness and um, continue being an innovative school that can kind of break out of this quarter, quarter mode. Um, and we really want to like create an opportunity in Cedar Rapids. This this uh, this gives Jen a headache, so I'll, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> Don't I'll look go. at it for yeah. longer than like <laughs> so five go from away. going to quarters until infinity. You know, I mean, like <laughs> let's let's find figure out a way for students to identify their passions, develop a plan, and follow a, a career pathway. Um, this is what when I was hired in. I think I was hired in 2000. I was hired the year of COVID. And so this was a plan that was started before I got hired, and the, the plan was to take these um, exploratory pathways and change them to be uh, more, uh, like less exploratory and more intense, right? Um, so eventually, like this, this last year we did this. So sixth graders, they all do all four exploratories, but seventh and eighth graders, they have semesters, and they get to choose which four exploratories they, they made. And then the dream was like the, the, so the it was basically the administrator's dream was to eventually have the eighth graders take one long intense exploratory and that would prepare them for a, a very intense pathway. All right, so we come back and we're like, how do we do this? Let's just go crazy. We have permission to do whatever we want. We're a magnet school. Let's do block scheduling. Some of the classes will be 30 minutes long. Some of them will be 90 minutes long. There'll be no bells. And then it was just like, holy crap, it was chaos. I mean, and so I think it was, you said it was It like lasted weeks. three weeks, yeah. I think. Um, and kids had like six or seven different schedule iterations during that time. Yeah, within that time. It, yeah. Was, yeah. it was crazy. So kids had different schedules one day from another. Teachers were losing their minds. Kids didn't know where to go. The sixth graders were, I mean, it was, it was awful. Mm -hmm. Epic and fail. And everyone was coming off of the trauma of COVID. Yeah. Like, and trying to catch up in math. And it was... It was awful. So we went back to um, 
the tr just to save everyone's sanity, we went back to the traditional schedule um, that year, and then that's where. It was really a timeout. <laughs> Everybody yeah. back on the bus. Yeah. What, what is going on right now? Um, there were so many, and this is, that's right when I showed up. Um, you know, I got yeah. hired, um, it would have been 2020, two, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> two years ago, um, when, when this happened, right? I'm like, mission, vision, awesome, uh, block schedule, we can make this work, we can give kids that choice no. in, their, in their pathways and their learning and stuff. I'm like, I am on board, this is awesome, and I show up to this building, and the first day we have this block schedule, and I'm like, what, what, what did I just do? <laughs> yeah. Like, and, whoa. And then these, the things that are at the bottom, we, we realized that we hadn't considered, you know, that the fact that kids signed up, they avoided like the plague one of our courses because of the teacher that they knew had been there before, and now the new teacher comes in, and you know, we're dealing with kids here, you know, so when they are making these, you know, career, or these, the plan, pathway, and passion, they are 12, you know. We also didn't want to squeeze kids out of, you know, in a, in a band situation, you need kids on the third clarinet part too. You don't want all your first chair players that are going to be soloists. So how do we keep kids from, like, taking themselves out of an exploratory experience into this intense focus on one thing? So there was, there's some cautionary tales that we kind of learned during that time too. So in comes Ted. Um, there's so many cool things happening, uh, you know, all these early adopters, the things that are happening in our music department, in our exploratory department, in our core content areas. And at the, I'm just like a, a kid in a candy store. And at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, remember, and, th and this happened, and this happened, and this <laughs> happened. But at the same time, it, it was, there was so much isolation. So I, I said, well, wait a minute. Who, wait, who are we? What do we do? I, I couldn't really explain that. Um, it was just a mixed bag of amazingness all over the place. So, so we needed to really norm our experience, norm who we are as a school, norm what we do as a school, and how we do that. So we really, really focused on developing the structures that would support our mission and vision. We needed to make sure that our structures would support that, right? Block scheduling is a structure that did not support it. Um, but things like our professional learning communities, making sure that there is protected time so that our professional learning communities can stay student focused and look at student evidence and make database decisions to really lead to student achievement. Okay? Um, really, really having a unified building-wide messaging system through our advisory classrooms. Okay? Developing that common understanding throughout the entire school so everyone's on the same page okay? to support our mission and vision. <laughs> but really, what did we need to get to? We needed to get to clarity. Okay? So in order to get to clarity, we needed to figure out all of these awesome things, but who is McKinley and what does McKinley stand for? So, <coughs> just tell me. Before, I'll tell you okay. when I, I <laughs> she, she's, she's already laughing. I literally was working on this slide last week and I, I thought someone from Google was gonna knock on my door and be like, dude, you just broke Google. You're like busted, because there's so many animations. But, um, so we, we revised our career, uh, our STEAM career exploratory pathways st structure and had an emphasis on medical sciences. We have an emphasis on the arts, and we have a steam theme model of instruction. If we do those three things really well, we know that there will be an increase in student engagement and sense of belonging, and if there's an increase in student engagement and sense of belonging, student achievement goes up and the gaps go down. So that is our clarity, that is what we're going to do. So what does that look like more specifically? So if you think back to the other slide, we were basically saying, by the time you're an eighth grader and 13 years old, you have chosen your career. <laughs> wow, I don't, I, I, yeah, that was crazy, <laughs> right? So, you know, as a sixth grader, let's give all these kids these experiences and all these uh, pathways, uh, exploratories we have, right? But as a seventh and an eighth grader, let's open up more choices, more offerings, and let's let you pick and choose where you're at. Because as a seventh grader, you might be more interested in this, and you might come back as an eighth grader, and you know what, I really wanna try that, because my buddy did that, and that was cool. It's open game. We've got semester-long courses. You'll be able to see what those courses are in this program. That's at the end of the table, if you haven't grabbed one, that we'll refer to later as well. And when we think about student engagement, right? So these, these courses, That's focusing on medical sciences. I had blue hair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Medical sciences, visual arts, computer sciences, engineering tech, student engagement, right? It's right there. 
you go. Yeah. Also, the emphasis on the arts. Okay? We have a very, very rich history in the arts. McKinley Steam Academy, or McKinley Middle School opened in 1922. So we, we have a beautiful old building, 100 years old. Our auditorium was actually the original city theater in Cedar Rapids when they built it before the Paramount. So, and that's you know, a Grant Wood painted backdrop. Yeah, yeah. original Grant Wood, right? So we, we really Grant have Wood to honor and that history. His students, so they yeah. can actually trace what strokes were Grant Wood and which ones the kids did. <laughs> <laughs> so these opportunities for our students, whether it be orchestra or band or vocal and all the things that go with that, or our musicals, or our show choir, and when you look at our musicals, don't forget about the gigantic tech crew we have as an opportunity for kids to be able to participate in that, even though they're not one that would be wanting to get on stage and perform, right? And our STEAM theme model of instruction. When we're thinking about learning opportunities for students in any area, including our core content areas, so four things we want to be thinking about. Is it going to happen for everything? No. But at least in each unit, we should have a learning experience or a performance task that connects to a STEAM component, that connects to a profile of a graduate competency, that connects to a content-specific priority standard, and supplies evidence of their learning at least once. Okay? So when we think about core content areas and connections, um, I, I really appreciated this morning Susan talking about um, asking questions. How do we get kids to ask better questions? Open up that creativity side, right? Um, and we're getting there, right? And it's the teachers that are doing it. And it's awesome because in science, just this past, these are all examples from this year, in science just this past year, um, they were talking about fracking and the effects that it has on the earth. And the question was, well, how do they get it to explode so perfectly? Wow, what an opportunity. So Let's go get some pumpkins. Let's carve out the face of the pumpkin. Let's get the actual materials they use for fracking, small amount, obviously. Let's put them in there, and let's, let's have a pumpkin carve itself and blow it up outside. It was awesome. Talk about, I mean, I, I might have been more Any engaged explosion. than the students. Yeah, I just love blowing stuff up, yeah. right? So. So there's, there's an opportunity that we had for that. Um, in math, using the math, right? Math's always one. I'm never going to use this, right? Why, when am I ever going to use this? Okay. Instead of talking about the math that we were doing, this is the math you would be doing uh, to build stair stringers. Let's go apply it. Was that, at a, was that Kirkwood? This was actually at the uh, Carpenters Training Center okay. in, in Cedar Rapids. These guys were great. It was a blast. The kids were completely engaged. That, that math class, just this past year, that's an eighth grade class. From seventh grade to eighth grade, they had a 23-point gain in their ISAS scores. Student engagement. Real-world application opportunities, right? And, and like in our ELA classes, right? Voice and choice. We read a book, right? Traditionally, we read a book, we talk about it, we write something about it. Well, why can't we read a book and choose how we want to talk about it or choose how we want to su supply evidence? Why can't we have some choice in those things? Okay. And finally, thinking about that career connection, right? We want kids to not choose their career by eighth grade. We want kids to have the opportunity to explore all of these careers. We are literally located in the Medcorder Regional Medical District. It is so easy, and we were not taking advantage, partially because of COVID, we couldn't, right, of having these professionals come over to our school and show these kids all the different opportunities they have in the medical sciences field. Let them touch an actual heart. It was a pig heart. They didn't need to know that. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> but it was pretty cool. But um, it's just, that was, this is a sixth grade class, but seventh and eighth grade get to have their own, um, like, out of the classroom experiences with mm -hmm. different um, different jobs too. There's career days for all of the all kids. grades. Yeah. Yep. So they just look different in each grade. Yep. So there's our clarity. This is what we do. This is how we do it, and this is why we do it. And over the past two years, I told you about that eighth grade math class this year. Yeah. But over the past just two years, ISAS, ELA, and math up. Gaps, double-digit reductions. Yep. 
so thinking back to what actually has caused us to get some traction and move for closer to be what we want to be, um, this, our music team developed a chart that we all do. We all do a fall concert. We, we combined to do a music expo, which we decided having three concerts in the dead of winter is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So let's plan this expo, and every student develops a project. Again, there's some links in the resources page about some of the things that we do. But it is, we totally flip. Instead of I pick the music for them to do, they pick what they want to play, or if they wanted to write about music, or if they wanted to compose something or whatever, and then share their composition. So it's very much a student-driven thing, and it's a wonderful thing to teach, because then you become the advisor, and you just, you have to, you know, you. We provided some guidance for them. There's some documents about, um, there's a link to what is Expo, and we shared that with our classrooms. But all of our music classes are structured like this with the optional stuff at the bottom. So this would be the one for band. Those are our actual dates from this past year. But then optional things, giving students the choice. You know, There's going to be the kid that just wants to be in band and just wants to play in band. And they don't take their instrument home, or, but they, they play well enough, and it's a great experience for them. And then there's kids that really want to do all these other things, where they want to be in jazz band or go to honor bands or you know, but other, you know, lots of other things. So it's kind of a choose your adventure concept of that. And then <laughs> our little steam that was that was something from one of our steam days, taking parts of a piano and we just created that sign. But that's a throwback to we don't just do that that one day. Mm -hmm. But the the structure and the organization and, and providing, again, <laughs> a, a way for us to see the whole big picture and then. It's easy to play when you know where the sandbox is, kind of. OK, and so we have advisory. I know we have seven minutes left, so I want to be con conscious of our time. We have advisory classes, and it's kind of like a homeroom, but I think that uh, this last year, we really tried to push it to be more than that. Um, so we do a social-emotional curriculum, but we also do uh, school-wide events. And I, I, this was my favorite because it was the um, it was the door decorating contest for uh, and the Black History Month, and so each class throughout all grades researched and uh, researched one person and decorated the door. And I had all of these teachers coming up to me saying, "Wow, did you see the door that my student made?" And I go, "Yeah, yeah, I did. Guess who <laughs> taught him that technique? <laughs> like I did. It was it was really cool, um, and it was just awesome to see art everywhere." And to connect it to um, social studies and ELA, and um, to have that opportunity for teachers to really highlight. And last year, this year, I didn't win the door decorating contest, which I thought was insane. But I guess that's a good thing. Like that, that shows progress. <laughs> shows progress. So, how do you know when you're performing? It, it's evidence, right? We have so many pieces of evidence right now. Um, that is so fun as we were trying to pull some of this information together um, that obviously we, we literally pulled so much out and we're still going to be close to the end of time, right? Yep. <laughs> but it's, it's the evidence, right? And where do we see that integration? Okay, so I just pulled a couple of projects that I did this um, last year. So my, as an exploratory teacher, my focus is to show career pathways. And I also want to bring in the community as much as possible and give students a chance to collaborate and go through the design thinking process. So in the slides at the end, you were talking about design thinking process. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. But I, I provided this slide, this lesson, this slideshow, as well as a template for what students did for brainstorming with the design thinking process. Um, so we, uh, we answered a call to artists that the city of Cedar Rapids put out, and it was we weren't able to actually officially enter the competition because we weren't old enough. <laughs> but I, but they, they, they came out and they collaborated and presented to the class. And we, um, we ended up getting so, like, featured on their social media page. And they provided the materials for this project. So this was called the Rain Art Project. Um, the city wanted to highlight their uh, climate sustainability goals. And so we studied the sustainability goals, which is a, math, or a science related. Um, you know, it was all science. I had I have videotape of one kid explaining to the entire like half of the room what global warming was and how it started. And he started by saying, "Well, back when the dinosaurs, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was amazing." Um, and so the the students worked together in teams to uh, create artwork that was surprising and delightful yet educational and informative. With when you, when you were talking about climate change, this was very difficult thing to do for a kid. 
Um, but they decided they they worked together to create these stencils. We used um, uh, digital drawing, and then we used our laser cutter and our seam lap to create the stencils. And then we went out and sprayed it with a hydrophobic spray. So we talked about what hydrophobic spray was. <laughs> so I mean, there was a lot of of interdisciplinary stuff in there as well. But I think the real and the real value of this lesson was looking at how artists find jobs and how they answer the call to, a call to artists and how they would write an um, artist statement to go along with it. That was a really fun project. Um, so when it rains, the, the stencils show up. And when it's dry, you can't see the stencils. Right. Sorry if I didn't explain that. Okay. Um, and then students took their, this idea and created their own social justice action posters. So there was students that were, um, did some Black Lives Matter posters. There were students that did um, uh, homelessness. Like, like, there was just, it was every single social justice um, subject that you could think of. It was great. And then we also, during the beginning of the year, I had two eighth grade classes uh, go into the music classrooms, take photos of some of the students, and we used Photoshop. Well, the, the free version, version is Pixlr, so we used Pixlr to um, create uh, posterized versions of images and then project them onto the wall. And students created uh, different aspects of the composition, worked together to create the composition, and then we traced it and made a gigantic mural um, outside of the, uh, so all of the music. That's the door to my room. That, yep. you know, kids are seeing that every day, and that whole idea of screaming our theme over and over and over Screaming again. our theme and then also letting students like bring in their own passions, like Spider-Man playing the saxophone. Okay. <laughs> Other pieces of evidence for me, um, innovative learning spaces, right? Innovative learning spaces are really cool, but they weren't that cool when no kids were in them, right? <laughs> so I love, I love, love, love our innovative learning spaces now, our print lab, right? It's cool to have the 3D printers and the laser cutters and stuff. What's even more cool is when kids are using them for for things in school. Like, they're asking those questions. Like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had this prop for the musical? Yes, let's go upstairs and make it. Make a giant microphone that, for a prop, right? Where is that? Let's there it make, is. Um, you know, medical sciences. Wouldn't it be cool if we could make, like, a, a cool heart display? And then the next question was, wait, we should make it, like, pump blood. Let's go get some tubing. Let's get some red food coloring and water. Let's actually make it happen. Hey, I want to make our, our student teacher, she was awesome. I want to make her these earrings. Wait, but where's she gonna where's she gonna put them? Let's make a stand, right? <laughs> Those questions just keep snowballing into kids creating things nonstop. Whether it be in the steam lab, the print lab, the recording studio, kids are always in there, asking to be in there, working on projects, and they're smiling. Yep. It's it's a way for them to create and provide evidence of their learning in a non-traditional format, which they don't connect to in today's world. And so now. Why not Beagles celebrating? How does it all come together, you know? There's the slide that, you know, this is an official Cedar Rapids Community School District document, but we really do live and breathe. And, you know, some of us have been around, it used to be called the PDSA cycle, Plan, Do, Study, Act, or various iterations. But that whole thought of we go through something, we start, we ask a question, and then we imagine, and we plan, and we create, and improvise, and improve it, and then we share it, and then we start all over again. So as an example of that, these, these brochures that were from our STEAM showcase that we just recently did, literally minutes after the STEAM showcase ended, we're in the hallway talking about, now this was really cool, but then next year let's do this. And we just build on that. And even, even like right now, the Performing Arts Course Offerings page, it says music standards for the theater class. No, we need to call those the National Core Arts Standards, and we need to, you know, but, and, and, as you'll see in, the, in our, one of our closing slides coming up on, we, you know, we, we want to celebrate. This was awesome. We finally did this. This was cool. It was know? an amazing celebration of all of the amazing things that happened throughout the year, which is the purpose of that. Um, but it was just so amazing to see all of the, the joy and happiness throughout that entire evening in the event, but also as teachers when we're completely wiped out. Um, Jen especially, thank you for all you did. <laughs> we were completely exhausted, but we're sitting there wondering, hey, we should do it this way, or we should do it this way, right? It's, it, when you get into that habit and you create that culture, that's a cyclical mindset of how do we continually improve and how do we continually adapt to offer the kids what they need and want, 
it, it's just a really good feeling, right? So we were going to read this to you, but we only have a minute left. Um, so I was hoping, I'm hoping that you're not like, we didn't give you the answer to all the questions that you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still figuring it out. And um, like even this year, I have ideas for next year. I mean, like the year after next year, but, you know, because yeah. we, we created new classes that the listings are in the, in the brochure, which are, we're really excited about. We're offering more and different. And I mean, we're just offering like twice as many classes as we were before. But I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do the year after. Mm -hmm. um, as a, as a seasoned educator, yeah. um, you know, there was not a sense of, oh, gee, Ted didn't do this, you yeah. know. It, I mean, and there really is this collaboration, and, and we're all asking questions, and we're all, we're, re we're realizing that we're human beings, though, mm -hmm. too, you know. And somebody, somebody did a um, escape room thing, and then the link didn't work right, you know. You know? So they, they sent out a message and then had hashtag human being or something like that. So that sense of just... We're not where we want to be, but we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. And these are hopefully we've shared with you some of the things that have helped us to actually gain traction along the way as we developed these yeah. ideas. And then there's a bunch of resources for yay. So hopefully that helps you out. I have my digital art resources there too. That's the slideshow I give to students when they're done early. And there's like a million. And this is all this is you know COVID after COVID. I had so many ideas like so I put them all in one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you um, for listening to our story. Um, like we said towards the end there, we kind of cut a few things out. But if you have questions, uh, my card is at the end of the table. Um, please grab some social media cards and hand them out. It's so fun to share a story. And like we talked about, uh, Susan mentioned this morning too, we, one of the things we really needed to do was change the narrative, right? Because what was happening was 90% of the messaging you were hearing was from 10% of people that have never set foot in the school. Well, so we, we left out the part that McKinley is located in the uh, high crime area of Cedar Rapids, mm -hmm. um, yeah. low and, income housing. And I think also we should mention that there's the, the teacher retention is a lot better. I mean, scores have been up, teacher retention is there. We're feeling like a real good community. So Evidence. all of this stuff is working. Mm -hmm. yeah. so Guys, thank you so much.